Madam C.J. Walker Builds a Business, Chapter 4. St. Louis, Missouri was unlike any place Sarah had ever seen. She nearly heard her neck standing on the sidewalk to gaze up at the tall buildings. She heard words and languages she'd never known existed. Her attention jumped from store to store and person to person as she tried to take it all in. She wondered what it would be like to have dinner at a restaurant instead of having to cook every meal. She gaped at the tiny train called a streetcar that shuttled people to and from their destinations like a colorful steel horse. St. Louis felt big, electric. The first place Sarah went was her brother's barbershop. I'm so proud of you, she cried and looked around, beaming. Every mirror in the place smiled back. Alexander plucked Layla out of Sarah's arms and held her up in the air, laughing. Well, aren't you a pretty little peanut? Layla giggled back. We're glad you're here, Sarah, but it's tough to make a city living. What will you do for work? James asked. I'll be a barber just like you, Sarah teased. You can if you put your mind to it, Owen piped up. Sarah was grateful for her brother's encouragement and hope and hopeful for her future. But without an education, she could only work the same job as she had before. With a sigh, Sarah went back to washing laundry and cleaning houses. Sarah made just a dollar a day, so she lived in the only place she could afford, the Badlands. The Badlands was the most polluted, dangerous part of St. Louis. But Sarah found joy, despite it all. She joined a church and made friends. Her friends told her about an affordable school for Layla. Sarah worked harder than she had in her entire life to make sure her daughter received the education she never had. Sixteen years flew by. Layla thrived at school and went on to earn top grades. Sitting in the audience at Layla's high school graduation, Sarah thought this had to be the proudest she'd ever felt. Then Layla got accepted to Knoxville College in Tennessee. Like her mama had scraped coins together in jam jars to pay for a wedding, Sarah made sure Layla had enough for her tuition. She was determined her daughter would never have to work as a washerwoman and encouraged her to get a beauty degree. While shopping for Layla's college supplies, Sarah spotted a bottle that made her stomach turn. It had a picture on the front showing a black woman with kinky hair next to what looked like a white woman with straight hair. You too can be beautiful, the label read. They're calling us ugly, Sarah grumbled, stomping down the aisle to show Layla the bottle. Just look at the shampoo. Layla's nose wrinkled in disgust. I don't want that, Mama. That's the only shampoo there is, baby, her mother replied. Sarah reluctantly dropped the bottle in her basket. With Layla away at college, Sarah had more time to herself. She enrolled in night school. There, she learned reading, math, geography, and bookkeeping. On the weekends, she volunteered at an organization dedicated to helping the poor. At one meeting, Sarah passed around a newspaper with a headline that read, Local man struggles to care for family. We should host a bake sale for this man, Sarah said. She remembered what it felt like to go hungry. Sometimes she hadn't even had so much as a handful of grits for breakfast. The following Sunday, everyone brought a little something to sell. Jenny made crackling bread. Thelma baked a pie with fresh blackberries. Sarah recreated her mother's wedding cake. The desserts sold faster than they could put slices on the plates. Sarah's fundraiser was such a success that the local paper wanted to run a story on it. One of the newspaper journalists, Charles Walker, invited Sarah into a small office full of piles of paper covered in scribblings. The typewriter, the typewriter keys on the desk looked so well-worn, Sarah wondered how many words he typed a day. It's a pleasure to finally meet you, Miss Breedlove, Charles said. I've heard so many good things about your work. Why, thank you, Mr. Walker, said Sarah. The pleasure is all mine. Charles's handshake was firm and sure, and Sarah liked him right away. He was smart and ambitious and funny, too. They went on a few dates. Charles always dressed formally, whether it was the weekend or a work day, and Sarah teased him about his love of matching bow ties and socks. Soon after, they became a couple. 
Sarah had a new boyfriend, a daughter in college, and a happy, busy life. She started getting invitations to events sponsored by well-to-do black people. But Sarah was not completely comfortable with these gatherings, at these gatherings. She felt she stood out, and not in a good way. The women at the parties had fancier clothes, lighter skin, and long, shiny hair. Sarah had dark brown skin, and while she was not ashamed of her skin, her hair was another story. Sarah's hair was kinky and short, with flaky, bald spots. No matter how hard she tried, she could not get her hair to grow. Sarah decided to make her hair so beautiful that she never had to cover it or feel ashamed of it again. Here's Sarah and Charles. That's the end of chapter four.